Call the uh, Hadley Select Board meeting of June 12th, 2024 to order. This is a hybrid meeting and we have in attendance this evening, Amy Parsons, Jane Nevin Smith, myself, Randy Iser, acting chairperson as Molly is on vacation and David Phil. In accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 22 of the Acts of 2022, signed by the governor on February 15th, 2022, I announced that this meeting of the select board is being recorded by Hadley Media, the select board's office via Zoom, and ask if there is anyone present who is also recording this meeting. Let the minutes reflect that nobody else has indicated that they are recording this meeting. Okay. We can move right on, right along to appointments. Uh, item 2.1, Hadley Housing Authority joint meeting to do take care of a vacancy appointment on the Hadley Housing Authority. So you guys need to come up front, please. And, you got, and you're got and you going to have to call your meeting to order. Is the applicant present online? Crystal Jackson's not on this evening, no. Okay. So is she coming? I don't know. She should we wait? No, she is not coming. Oh, she's not. Oh, coming. She's not coming. She is not coming. Can we just go ahead and on with this or not? Go on with it. Yeah. It's on the agenda. We can. I mean, we just assume she wanted to be it because we have applications from her. Because otherwise, it'd be like you grab somebody off the street and appoint them without them knowing. I. She's not sending she, herself. Well, I think it's because y'all met with her recently in the last few months for other boards that she's joined. Okay. I, I, I'm assuming that was her assumption. So I'd like to. Uh, uh, I'm Reese Spencer. I'm the chair for Hadley Housing Authority Board of Commissioners. Uh, we will open our meeting with all of the um, preamble that uh, Chair Eiser already gave us. And we will do so by roll call. Again, Reese Smith Freedom, the chair of Hadley Housing Authority. Member Rich Witkus. Member Sue Oppenheimer. Okay, so the purpose of this joint meeting is to look at the application of Crystal Jackson to become a member of your committee and decide whether uh, you want her to be on your committee. Um, well, we don't have a, an applicant to ask questions of. I just assume you would have questions for the applicant as well, but you all know her. My understanding is she serves on, Crystal Jackson serves on four committees in town, cultural DEI, Library, uh, Friends of the Library, and uh, Housing and Economic Development. She's also up for a uh, fifth slate, uh, slate, uh, part of the slate um, broadband uh, task force or committee this yeah. evening. She's well known in town. Uh, she is uh, well respected, and I think she's probably a very, would make a very, very good addition to the Board of Commissioners for Happy Housing Authority. So my question is, you all have terms and they stagger, which term will she be taking? Is well, there's like only one term up, and my understanding was the select board would appoint for the first year of the five-year term. That was my question. And then next spring, uh, she would... Uh, run on the ballot as an incumbent for the remainder of the five-year term was for four years. Okay. I move that we appoint Crystal Jackson to the Hadley Housing Authority. Second. Okay, motion by Jane, second by David. Any further discussion from the select board? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And then from my board? Favor. Aye. Favor. Aye. It's unanimous. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Close your meeting. Close your meeting. Yes. Thank <laughs> you so much. You're welcome. Ms. Nevin Smith. And uh, I move that we close the meeting, or adjourn our meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Are you going to second? Second. Let's have a vote. Favor. Favor. All right. Thank great. Thank, thank you all very thank much. You. Have a good evening. Okay. Next up on the agenda is item 3.1 public comments. Is there anybody here or on Zoom that would like to make a public comment? That's Amy. Amy Feiden. Hello. 
How are you Hi. today? Good. Hi. Hi. So I'm here. I want to discuss the new position being created, the HR assistant town administrator, and why I think it's a bad idea to do right now. We just finished budget season and the department had supplied a budget to the town administrator and finance committee. Most, if not all, were cut, some as much as half of the wish list. That what we passed at town meeting was a level service budget. No new positions were created. First, where is this money coming from? Finance committee, town administrator, treasurer, we reviewed every line item and we were not flushed with cash nor have extra money lying around. A new position like this should be discussed through a budgeting process, not one month after town meeting. Second, most important, what kind of message are we sending um, to the staff? It's been a few years now and we tell our non-union employees, hold tight, we are doing a compensation study to address your concerns. At the same time, we're telling them that budget is tight. Last year, uh, we addressed the town administrator and gave a significant increase in salary. Now you are looking to give the town administrator an assistant and wonder why all these new unions are being formed. This does not seem fair. I feel that before we create any new positions, we take care of our current uh, many long-term employees. In my opinion, that um, you should wait until after fall town meeting. At that time, the budget will have been reviewed. Our, cur our current employees' um, compensation will have been taken care of. Um, and if you need an HR person right now in immediate to fill the spot, then my suggestion is to subcontract this out as a temporary position within the budget. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, oh, and she fell off. I think that was bad with Hadley internet. Uh, okay. I've got good internet. She's coming back. Well, Amy, are, are, Amy, are you coming back? We, we lost you. Oh, she's you lost me. You lost me. Yeah. Yes, Sorry. we did. Oh, did you hear any of it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think most of it. Okay. So I basically just think we should wait until town meeting. And if we need a temporary person, we do it within what our budget has. And we do a 1099 like we've done in the past. And then after um, town, all town meeting, we can uh, bring this back to discussion. That's my opinion. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Amy. Appreciate it. Yep. You know we can't talk about it, right? Well, I know you're not going to talk about it with me, but I know you're going to talk okay. about it because it is on the agenda tonight. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure you understand we can't re respond to you. That's fine. Thank you. Okie dokie. Thank you. Yep, Anybody bye -bye. else for public comment? See none, we'll move on. Old business item 4.1, Digital Equity Steering Committee, charge and appointment. Alex, is that yours? I'm coming, looking for, yeah, found it. All right, so we have the 11th member. Her name is um, Linda <laughs> Mill Michael Michaelopoulos. <laughs> um, and then we have um, Jennifer Sanders James, Crystal Jackson, Jane Evans Smith, Susan Brown uh, from the library, Andy, Andy McKenzie, Amy Fighton, Kyle Dragon, and Ronald Mandler. Ronald or Roland? What says Roland? Roland, so I apologize. Roland Mondler. Okay. Motion to approve those people to the motion committee. to appoint. Appoint. Second term. Okay, we have a motion by David. I'll, hold on one second. I got to amend that. For the term of the project. Oh, okay. Good. Yes. Okay, motion by David, second by Jane. Any further discussion? Can I vote? I'm on the list. You're on. Yeah, yes, you, yeah. Can, you can okay. vote. Yeah. All right. Hearing no further discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you, Alex. Yep. Item 4.2, Assistant Town Administrator, Human Resource Director. I guess, Carolyn, that's for you to tell us about. All right, you had asked, uh, I know Jane had asked the last meeting to add one after some of the edits that you reviewed to add self-directed in that job description, which I did do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, what I also included was uh, you had asked for some comparisons. Those are three of the towns that were on the compensation studies, the towns that were used as comparisons. So I included, you had looked, asked for the town administrator and manager was getting, and then what the ATA, the assistant town administrator, HR director um, is getting. So I included that, but that's for FY25. Um, to answer, I, I do would like just to clarify a few things that um, we have looked at um, uh, the cost of, of, of doing this, and there have been uh, cost savings in the budget that would obviously would all have to be um, with the comp study and with this position. It's all up to the town voters at um, at uh, at town meeting. Uh, this uh, I just want to clarify too. We did not. There were no departments that were reduced by 50%, um, as Amy stated. I just want to clarify, we did really well this year, and we did not cut budgets. We There were some increase in requests um, that we lit, we did not do, such as training, very minimal. It was, ex, you know, it's uh, very consistent through the boards. There was no positions were cut, no, nothing, no uh, departments were, were cut. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, so... The the range that you would uh, you would you are asking tonight of what the recommendation for the range would be. This is not from me. This is from the the task that you gave me to do, and so I reached out to the Collins Center. I also reached uh, um, uh, uh, got the what those those comparisons that I gave you, um, and when I spoke with Mary at the Collins Center, um, based on her. Uh, reviewing um, what those departments are, what departments are getting across other communities for the ATA, and as well as um, what the responsibility of that person is. She uh, recommended that there be a range and it would go within the same grade as the DPW director. Um, that uh, So it would be, even though it's a, it's a department head position, she just wanted to emphasize while she's, why that position is not the boss of the department heads, uh, the assistant town manager, uh, town administrator will be operationally and function, have functional authority over many aspects of the work and will act in the town administrator's place as needed, which has more accountability and complexity to the work. Uh, so she um, it recommended a range and it can be posted as a range, but uh, that's the information I gave you. The, the range would be uh, 96,361 to 125, 388. So that's minimum to high. So what's, and, what's the current HR director position salary? Um, Jones here, I think it's 80, 25, it'll be 84. Currently it is at 82.5. I'm sorry, 82.8. Thank you. And I did want to clarify um, also that uh, town employees that were not a part of the union that but were entering that new union for the conference, uh, for the municipal employee did get a 6% increase last year. And you also gave them longevity as well. Right. So this evening, what are, what are we looking to do here to approve this position or the dis, the uh, description of the position? I think you approved the description based on me adding that. Right. So. OK. So I think we should go out to bid for this position because I don't think the town will function well without someone in this position. Are we agreeing on the salary range? Yeah, I think it's like most things. Comp, uh, what is the word? Compensate with experience. I would just like to set the 
bottom level of that range a little bit lower. I was thinking like 80. Well, let's start where we currently were with the HR person. But he came in with a lot of experience. He, right. Yeah. But but so, my only concern is that we just gave the HR director a, a higher salary versus the previous HR director a higher salary than the one before him. And, you know, he, he had a decent amount of certifications and experience and whatnot. But when it, until it gets down to hiring and we decide whether we're going after somebody who's concentrating more on HR or more on the assistant town administrator aspect of things, you know, um, I don't know. I think it, it just gives us a little bit more flexibility to make that hiring decision. It's not saying that we're going to start them at 80, but if we have someone that's a good candidate we really like, that maybe doesn't have quite as much of experience as, you know, an experienced HR person did or would have. Just a little more flexibility. Well, the other thing is, if we started that number, it's already in the budget. We don't have to look for the money. We, there's money, ident there was funding that was identified that we had cost savings in two different areas, right. uh, support staff in the town administrator's budget, as well as um, we saved a significant amount with our accounting. So certainly we would not have pursued right. this without. I, I like David's thought process in that if we set the, the low end at 96 and we don't get somebody that's worth 96, but we'd like to hire them, uh, we're kind of stuck. So we can always come up. We can't go down. I agree. Is there a range you'd like me to place in there, David or Randy? I mean, I was thinking 80 as a bottom number, which is a little bit lower than what we're currently at. Uh, what was the high end that you 25 something or others? That, that is very high. That's extremely high. Well, and I'm also looking at these other numbers <laughs> and the, if you will, um, where they fall relative to the Hadley Town Administrator salary. They're all much higher than we're paying Carolyn. So I think that what they're paying in ATA is going to be much higher than what. If we're looking at the quality. But they are also much larger towns, too. Exactly. Um, so I'd say 80 to 100 for starters. What What does the DPW director currently make? Sorry, Joan. <laughs> I'd, I'd have to look. I wouldn't want to throw it out there. Yeah. I think it's 104. 104 or 5, something like that. Yeah. Because I know that. There's a ton of licenses and certifications that position has to have as well as experience. So, uh, you know, although we want someone experienced, we also don't want to upset everybody, all the other department heads by saying, hey, we're going to, you know, blow this out of the water by starting super high. Um, yeah, I, I think we we definitely need the help in this area. Um, I'm just concerned that, I mean, it, we're, we're pricing this so that Carolyn doesn't, you're not gonna have a job <laughs> because this person's going to do everything you're doing. That's what I'm reading here. So that makes me a little concerned. I would think that it would be, this position would be someone who's going to help and take your place if you're not there, not, to. Uh, and we, which I mean, I realize it could be any time for any amount of time, but my thought is that it's going to be minimally needed to take your place and just to be there to help you. Uh, and to, as I said earlier in the, in this conversation, uh, I think the human resources aspect of it is the most important. Mm -hmm. So the way I read it is. The person would have the qualifications to do anything that Carolyn does so that she can say, I'm really busy working on this. Would you take care of that? Yeah. And I get then that. they can pick that up. And I see that as a really valuable asset for the amount of stuff that happens in the administrator's office in this time. You you might want to you, you might want to change the job description. To call it. Um I think if you read the job description, it's 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 you're going to have difficulty. difficulty. So you might want to modify that. If you read the <clears throat> job description, we're going to have difficulty with what, Carol? Filling the position at 80,000. HR directors are not uh, even looking at jobs at 80,000. I'm just giving a, re a reality yeah, check. That's your that's call. Fine. Absolutely. Yeah. But we can do it. But you're, you're going to you'll have a, it, you'll get what you pay for. 
but also well, two things. One is like Randy's, Randy's focusing on the HR, right? And I think HR is important, but I also think that it's it's important that it, the person takes some stuff off of your plate and off of Jennifer's plate, and then th that has been just overwhelmed by doing it all alone. So we might not be able to make that decision, you know, looking at two candidates, is it more important we have a, a very qualified <coughs> assistant town administrator, or is it more important we have a somewhat qualified HR person until it comes down to making that hiring decision? So and maybe we put it out there and see what we get. And if we have the range, then it gives us that flexibility. Um, the concern I have with the one, was it 125 is the top of the range? Mm -hmm. Not saying we're never going to give you a raise again, but that puts them right up against you, very close to what you're making. And so for their progression in the future, let's just say at some point you say, all right, I'm going to retire. Now they're taking on all of your responsibilities and and that come along with your position and they're going to make an extra three grand for that from what they're making now. It's, it seems like a very small. It's that's more based on what you're paying me. Right. I, don't, if you can take my salary out of it yep. and look at what the job should be right. paid. That's, that's another issue. And that's what, when, when we did my contract negotiations, it was gradual to get this position. So when I do leave, right. you aren't going to have a huge hit on your budget. Right. So don't look at my position and what and compared to mine. I think you should look at what that position is and to bring in somebody who can provide that. You certainly don't want a, a, a beginner. We don't want a person begin. coming in. That's not going to be helpful we, or to you. It's not going to help to you or the next town administrator in three we, or four years. We agree. We don't want a beginner. On the other hand, we took a percentage of the average in the area for our other staff, and we need to consider if that is an option for what's going on here. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I think we need, I think we should start low. We can always go up. I like David's idea. But I don't know if I'd go as low as eighty thousand though. Yeah, I, I I agree that eighty. I think eighty is too low since we were paying the HR director. 83 but that was your full time and we're talking part time so yeah but we're not we're not paying a an hr director this much money and assistant eight uh town administrator we're not we're not separating that it's all right. one right so so what are you proposing well i'm he's thinking yeah he's thinking <clears throat> i th i think 80 is too low i agree with carolyn that it's going to be tough to get somebody. The I mean, low, I low would end. Uh, like eighty-seven to ninety-seven. I like sevens. Sorry, lucky seven. Lucky sevens, but <laughs> can we set it at the current HR director salary at least at the bottom, and then we have the flexibility? I just don't. I mean, Troy had a lot of certifications and experience oh. and whatnot. So. <laughs> But we are asking for you. There are directors out there who will do both, who have Troy's certifications and more, right. but not for 80. Right. Yeah. Cause we're, I mean, we're also, I know that in our minimum qualifications, you know, we have that, but we also have a preferred professional HR, PHR, SHRM CP certification on there. That's why I was saying, if you want to change the job description, take some of those out. I, I do kind of think some of those may be able to come out of there because those certifications are more along the lines of somebody that does full-time everyday HR for a large organization. And yes, an HR person has a lot of work to do, but they're not strictly HR. So I think having some HR certifications and some of the, some of the ability to do town administrator work is, is important. And you may have somebody that is only an expert in HR with all those certifications versus somebody that might be a little bit more versatile. And, and I think when you're, when you're screening those applications, you wouldn't pick somebody who's just heavy on one side. You would want the balance. There's def, there's applicants out there. And that's what your typical, if you were to look, because we I was got a whole sheet from the um, HR directors listserv, and there's a lot, most assistant town administrators are, they do partially HR director as well. So the, in fact, that bottom line says is preferred. It doesn't say is required. <clears throat> All those yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
or we could just cut that whole master's degree of professional HR certification with all the alphabet soup out, totally out. That might be a good idea because that might give us some more of a variety of candidates. Obviously, you know, when it comes time to making the hiring decision, somebody with those certifications is might be looked at more favorably, but you might have people that are, let's face it, people see preferred and it deters them from applying a lot of times if they don't have all those, so. All right, so if we're talking about a lower salary from what is shown on our screen here, and we think that that's not gonna work, I move that we take that line out of the job description. Can, can I just, why don't you let me post it with your salary first? as it says preferred? Because sometimes when you do that, people say, oh, Hadley, and they look at it and they say no, and then it comes up later with a change and they're not gonna look again. I think we'd be better off just to take this out and as well, David that, said, if somebody shows just, up and they have the degrees, that's great. <laughs> What's your concern, Carolyn? No, I'm good. No, you're not good. Nope. Speak. I like it's that. really hard because I, I didn't initiate this. This was initiated by the board, but I'm doing all the homework for you. Yep, right. No one is going to apply as an H assistant town administrator with HR responsibilities for 80000 We understand that. And it, I think, but what, what, especially I think Molly initiated this, what she was looking for is to have somebody at the level who can take on sophisticated projects for assistance. And I think that um, you will, if, if, if that job description changes, you're, I think you'll get less qualified people. So your concern is the salary range, not taking out the, the qualification. Uh, yeah, that was what I meant by suggestion, taking out qualifications. Um, it, I think you'd have to, maybe the board needs to meet again and discuss what is your priority? Is it HR or is it um, assistant town administrator and really understanding what that means mm -hmm. and deciding what is your priority. Yeah. Uh, because I think that's the way we're talking now, it's got, it will impact whether you're going to have somebody who's got that project management ability to work in a municipal environment to get revenues. Um, I'm sorry, to get projects completed. So I think um, I, I'm thinking about the effort to do all this and the, what your original purpose of that job was, mm -hmm. I don't, I think you might be spinning your wheels. Okay. So based on what you just said, and the fact that this was Molly's baby, so to speak, I think I would like to discuss this when all five members are here and, and decide what, what we really want uh, to put the weight on as to HR or assistant town administrator so then we can then we can finish this up that makes sense okay good with that so yeah. table. okay so we'll table that okay thank you <clears throat> all right moving right along item 5.1 new business dpw interim supervisor appointment scott McCarthy was supposed to be here, but he cannot. He's got another meeting. So, Carolyn, would you kind of give a short overview? I, have I can. Yeah. Some stuff here. Yeah. So, this is for, as you know, this position has been vacant for a while. We've advertised with, and nothing has, um, there has been no applications, or if there were, they were not qualified. Um, and so, um, there is an in house candidate part of the union, uh, Ted Casey, who is shown an interest in taking on this position with an agreement between uh, Scott and Ted that this would be a temporary position and at the end of 90 days to be able to look at it and say, um, Ted has the ability, this, we've got a, I've got a side letter of the agreement from the union to say, this isn't what I thought it was gonna be or this is, uh, that's not what I want. And also, if he wasn't performing up to the standard that for, for this position, that Scott could say, um, with with no grievance, you need to go back to your other position. So it was a very amicable discussion with the union, and um, so this is a this 
asking for authorization for that. And how long is he getting for the town? So Ted came to us, I, if I remember correctly, he came from out of town um, and was working with us for about five months. And then I think a higher paying position at a uh, neighboring town came up and, you know, it's one of those situations you start and you say, why did I leave? It was, and so he came back when there was an opening and he's been, just been showing level of interest and in wanting to move up and be more responsible. He's been doing it a little bit temporarily right now and really doing a great job. I know Scott's <laughs> pleased with his performance. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll make a motion um, that we appoint Ted Casey as the interim DPW supervisor for a period of 90 days, retroact retroactively effective June 3rd, 2024. Second. Okay, motion by Amy, second by Jane. Any further discussion? Do we also need to approve this side letter of agreement separately? Um, no, I don't think there's a, is there a signature for the select board? I don't think there, so. No, Town no. of Hadley. Town of Hadley, so. I can sign that. that, I typically sign those. Okay, okay. so that's the uh, no. Okay, so again, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes unanimously. All right, item 5.2, Atkins, I assume VLF is Valley Land Fund, and APR. Um, so Jonathan Carr is requesting select board approval as co-holder on the APR for a pump house on his property. Do we have anybody here to tell us, talk to us about this? Didn't you come to us before and we said you had to go through these steps because it was not your land? I think he has. Mm -hmm. he, he did, I'm um, sorry, may I ask Sure, sure. Um, so this is, um, he's already been to APR for this. He had come to y'all in the past for a hoop house, but he also had gone through APR before he brought that to y'all. Um, this felt very standard and routine. Um, all of the information is there. And y'all are listed as cult holders. The town is listed as cult holder on the APR. So they just need approval as a cult holder. I move we approve it. Um, second. Okay, motion by Jane, second by Amy. Any further discussion? So this is at the uh, Carr Cider House? It's up on the mountain. Okay. It's it's the property up, up on Mount Warner, yeah. the orchard. Okay. Okay. Oh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Okay, item 5.3, library trustee vacancy appointment. Is Lynn also here for that? Yes. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. I'm uh, Julie Rose and I'm, um, hoping to become a library trustee. I have, um, I feel the library is an essential part of the community and I've been working on the Hadley Cultural Council for six years, like being part of a team. I like advocating for things and I would be pleased to be appointed. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> and do we have Somebody from the is somebody from the library here to you got all those new plants watered? They look nice. They need more water. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Wait till Friday. <laughs> I am Lynn Latham. I am chair of the library trustees. Um, we met last night and voted unanimously on. Julie's candidacy, I will add that Patrick, the library director and I met with her at four o'clock this afternoon just to do sort of a more in-depth orientation. And she asked very good questions, which bodes well. <laughs> okay, all right, I just wanted to make sure that you guys were in favor of her. Okay, any questions from the select board? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, motion by Jane, second by David. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Welcome and thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Welcome. Thank you. You are not so terrible. <laughs> Some days, right? Some of us. Yeah. Some days. <laughs> yeah, wait till you get Jane home. <laughs> okay, item 5.4, Goodwin Memorial Building and Town Hall Project. 
That's Carolyn, you've got something to tell us about that? I do. So um, I don't know if you had a chance to read the proposal that I'm no. submitting tonight, but I'll, I'll give you a summer, summary. Um, as you know, uh, the Goodwin uh, Memorial project that was um, approved in 2020 has not moved forward for various reasons. It was COVID, it was the building materials costs, um, absence of really a staff to coordinate a comprehensive um, municipal office renovation project. So um, it is definitely getting underutilized right now. We certainly don't want to have it just sit there. So um, I, I would like to propose there is there is an issue, a broad issue for the town, and that's office space and storage space. I think we have the square feet for it between the Goodwin and the town hall, but I think we need a professional to do a study on what's needed. And it's very common. I gave you an example of a community who had that done um, that just to give the town an idea of what, how that could be utilized much better and to continue to progress towards saving that building as well as saving the town hall. You know, we're doing baby steps, you know, with the windows and the exterior. Um, so how do we pay for that? So in 2020 at the annual town meeting, uh, $226,000 um, and some change was uh, from the community preservation, the general fund um, to renovate the Goodwin Memorial Library. Presently, there's a little over 200,000 left. The other, other part of that had gone to some architectural fees, but that was just for the Memorial School. I'm sorry, just for um, the Goodwin Memorial. Um, and then $25,000 was also allocated from COVID to do to look at the ADA accessibility and the heavy elevator. Um, I did check with our town council to see how those uh, motions were worded to find out if in fact we could take some of those funds to hire a architectural engineering firm to do, I, I know the town hates to hear feasibility study, but we it will help us progress to do a feasibility space study of office space and storage space um, at the two buildings as a whole, you know, could some departments collectively, I know there was an, some original design on what was thought, what departments would be the best at the Goodwin, but I think to have a professional come in, which is what they do, is look at uh, how the department makeups are, understand municipal government, how they function, what offices might work together, how you can consolidate, how to make it more efficient. And it really is just setting up what you, to set up a team up for a, what it, what the town needs for space now and in the future. Because right now we are having difficulty at the town hall as uh, you know, positions are um, taking on more responsibility like our land use coordinator. Um, she's got a very tiny office. Uh, Linda has a, a small office and is hoping to fill, you know, has an assistant there now, but it's very, very small. So we have a lot of areas that no kitchen at all, nowhere for anybody to go for lunch. So this is down the road. This is not immediate, but we are, we can use some of those, uh, any of those funds to help pay for this feasibility study. From there is when the town would start to decide what's next, what are the costs going to be, what's available. Because I know we have big projects coming up. This is not immediate, but I think you need to start as a town looking at what the needs are going to be now, five years and 10 years for office space and storage space. What is your sense of the cost of this study? I don't have a sense. Uh, it's not going to be this much money. Okay, that was... It's not going to be that much money, what but we don't... What for the Russell School study? Oh, just 40. I think it's 40,000. 40. Yeah. So and that's a general sense of what. Yeah. And you could even include some of that scope of work. Like if it, these are very dear buildings to the town in the center of the town. It's just so critical. Obviously, you want to keep it for the town. But if there's any other cultural things or anything to see if that could be used in uh, a good one. Okay. So in your letter feasibility study on the paragraph that starts on June 20th, the last sentence, do we have $200,000 left or $20,000? You have $201,957.70 in that. Then we have 20. Zero. Out. Yeah, yeah, there's a zero. You're, you're, you left a zero out then. <laughs> 200 comma zero zero. So I didn't know if you moved the comma or oh, left yeah. out a zero. 
I was being, I, I was kind of estimating too. I did get the, yeah. Okay. I just wanted Thank to you, be Andy. clear on that. <laughs> I'll fix that. So one thing I think it's important that we ask them for when they, if they're not going to do this already is a flex office space that can be used temporarily. For example, when we're building a new DPW and the office staff may need to relocate temporarily for construction, um, you know, we need to remodel the superintendent's office, something like that, because yeah, we have to worry about our permanent departments, but we also have a constant need for temporary space as different departments are moving Definitely. and things like, are happening. So. You you guys would pick the scope of work. Yeah. And there's nobody, I haven't chosen anybody. I wouldn't do that unless, um, so we would, I would, I would have to do some more due diligence. I would actually contact this firm to get a general idea of what that looks like, what the cost could be. Because sometimes you can just say that we've got square feet here in town hall, and they can kind of give you an estimate based on their past projects. But we would doesn't mean we'd go with them. It would just help to find the scope of work. Understood. So what you're saying is you're going to do a little homework for us, yes. get, get us an idea what this study might cost with the understanding that it's not an exact figure. Mm -hmm. And then we will decide whether we want to move forward with it or not. And what okay. we want to include it in the study. Yes. So we have $200,000 from the 226000 mm -hmm. And then on top of that, we have the twenty-five. Yes. So it's so we essentially have two hundred and twenty. Yes, because the reality is you you will have to do an elevator at both buildings. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so we'll wait to hear further information on that one. Thank you. Item six one, town administrator's report. And my apologies, I don't I don't have one. It's been okay. Okay, that's fine. That's, that's fine. We did one last week. We only expect it every two weeks. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Item seven, select board members liaison report. Anybody have anything? No, I was I was uh, contacted by Patrick from the library and we're looking to set up some time to meet. So. Okay, cool. All right. Item 8.1, announcements. And I guess I get to be the announce for this evening. So I would we're, we're going to uh, give condolences to the families of Merle Buckout and Barbara Hendricks, who both passed away in the past week or so. Uh, both ladies were lifelong residents of Hadley. Merle Buckout was a teacher at Hopkins. Barbara Hendricks was a librarian at Hopkins for quite some time. And as I knew them, they were Mrs. Buckout and Mrs. Hendricks. So condolences to their families. Service for uh, Earl Buckout is tomorrow at First Church. Okay, thank you. Okay, anybody have anything else for announcements? Mm -hmm. All right, so now we are on item nine, which is executive session. Let's see if I can make this work. All right. Unless you want me to read it. She's good. <laughs> Go ahead, Amy. All right, I'd like to make a motion to move into executive session pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigating if an open meeting law may have detrimental effect on the um bargaining or litigating position of the public body for the compensation study the municipal employee union and firefighter union um as well as to conduct um strategy sessions in preparation for contract negotiations with non-union personnel um the town treasurer and we will not be reconvening in open session second very nicely done thank you so much welcome okay so Amy motioned, Jane second. As chair of the Hadley Select Board, I state that the board has moved and seconded, seconded to enter into executive session, and that I state that discussing the matter in open session will have a detrimental impact on the bargaining position of the town of Hadley. Could I have a roll call vote, please? Roll call vote, Phil? Yes. Iser? Yes. Nevin Smith? Yes. And Parsons? Yes. 